Yeah, some I think yeah. I refused some very rich clients. <laughs> like uh, Louis Vuitton, I can say that, like LVMH. And yeah. I didn't want to work for them because um, because I don't want to. And also because my, my type of films won't suit with them. Uh, because I filmed the reality. So if mm. reality is shit, it's going to be a shit movie, <laughs> you know? Welcome to the EcoSend podcast. Stories from marketers, founders, and change makers leading businesses for a better world. Hi there, welcome to another episode of the EcoSend podcast. Uh, I'm thrilled uh, to join you again for another wonderful show. And today's episode is going to be about the world of filmmaking. I am joined today by Magali Sive from uh, who is over in Paris, uh, and I believe it is a very rainy day in Paris, like it is in London today, as it is always in London. Uh, but Magali is a deeply convinced that the power of filmmaking, if used better, can make the world a better place. And Magali works on making branded documentaries for purpose-driven companies and organizations. And it's this is a whole world that I, while I'm in front of a camera right now and recording something, I don't know much about the world of filmmaking. And I am very excited to be talking to you, Magali. Uh, Thanks. And uh, yeah, I'm very pleased to have you on the show. So Magali, how are you doing today? Yeah, I'm very good. Thanks. Amazing. And you're right, there is a bad weather in Paris. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Me, yeah. I come from the At south, so I'm not used to that, but it's fine. <laughs> <laughs> At least we're indoors. It's all good. Yeah, um, yeah, yeah. I, I'm very excited to, to chat with you today. Um, thank you for, for being on the show. Um, yeah, that's so, all right. Yeah, maybe in your own words, like, what would you say? What What do you do? And uh, yeah, what what are you what, what are you working on at the moment? Yeah. Uh, so basically, I'm, I'm making film for companies. Um, yeah. So I am making branded documentaries. So it's, it's a special type of film. Um, and the way I do that is I film people in the real world. It's not fiction. Yeah. And mm. I'm only working for companies that I appreciate. So I can <laughs> book book out companies. And I this is see. a way for me to to have a purpose in my work, in yeah. my job. Yeah. yeah. So I see. So you you are living and breathing your values there and and really trying to make sure that the, the work you do is aligned with what you believe and even going as far as to turn down work to uh to to make sure you're sticking to to your own your own values. And I'm I'm excited to to dig into that because I'm sure there are so many challenges and pros and, and cons of doing that. Um, in terms of yourself and and how you got into this, Magali, what how did you get into the world of maybe a, a filmmaking, and how did you get into the world of caring about sustainability and and having making sure you're you're living so closely to such strong strongly held values? I I'm curious, like, did that just happen overnight? I assume not. <laughs> no, it's quite a long story actually, um, yeah. because I have an engineer degree. So oh, in France, wow. it's, a, okay. it's a master, yeah. it's five years yeah. studies. So I, yeah. I, I studied um, agronomy, agriculture. So it's very different. Mm, wow. <laughs> and, yeah. <laughs> and filmmaking was uh, my uh, hobby, my yeah. pas passion, yeah. hobby. And yeah. uh, one day a friend of mine asked me if I was okay to film with him and to be paid for that. And I was okay. like, okay. Oh, it can be a job, actually. <laughs> I thought it uh, was just a hobby, you know, because yeah. um, it's not cinema. So I thought it was just like that, you know, making small films with my friends. And actually, yeah. when I, I, I discovered that companies can pay for that, I was like, this is what I want to do. I want to make films. Amazing. Yeah. And about the sustainability is mostly because during my studies, I've studied um, all the climate change problems and stuff um with the agronomy system etc and um so i started to have this sensibility at this period and then i've traveled 
all the way like to New Zealand. Uh, that's why I can speak English with you right now, I think. <laughs> <laughs> and um, so I took the plane and I went very far and the, the country was beautiful, but I was like, I crossed the world with a plane, with a flight. And mm. it, I, it couldn't, this feeling couldn't go away. I was like, there was something bad into this, I guess. Or I, I'm not saying I'm against the plane all the time, but I mm -hmm. traveled a lot in my life. Mm. And I also started to que uh, questioning uh, the filmmaking stuff. Like, okay, actually, I'm doing advertising for companies. Mm. Mm. And when I was younger, uh, when I, I was a kid, I remember I was dead, I told my parents, like, uh, so many people are starving on the planet. Mm. And I thought that um, I saw we need a lot of money to make this um, stop. Mm -hmm. And so what country use the advertising money to give food to people? Mm -hmm. So I thought that mm -hmm. it, when I was a kid, this was my, the way I, I was thinking. And now I, I was see. like, I'm doing advertising for companies. So there is a problem <laughs> you know, <laughs> growing up. And so I was like, I want to, to make films because this is a, um, an area where I'm good at and I love it. So I have the energy to mm. do that. But how can I use that um, to make this world a better place? And yeah, yeah it, started to, it started like that. I yeah. see, I see. So, so, there was, so there's a lot about the sustainability side that came from, from the studies you were doing, but it became more and more intertwined with the filmmaking side as you realize actually filmmaking could have an impact on that and and those those two passions collided i guess yeah yeah and i was a bit yeah. angry with all the ads you can see <laughs> for companies like you know um when you see i always take this example because to me it's quite clear when you see an advertising for a car in a forest it's mm. like you can go into the nature with a big, big car, you know? <laughs> so this is, to me, there is something wrong with that. And this is filmmaking, yeah. it's a language. And we can use that to do greenwashing or we can do mm. that to to make communication for good projects. Yeah. Yeah, I, yeah absolutely. I, I yeah, actually, um, that, that kind of, uh, it, uh, reminds me of something on a on a previous episode we were talking about. Um, I, I think it was Rebecca from Tensha, and she was saying nature has a marketing budget of zero, and uh, and all of the like every brand has a bigger budget than the nature to advertise and uh, get people to know about it. And so the the idea that yeah, you're th through storytelling, through filmmaking, you can um maybe give give nature a bit of a uh an advert there is uh quite a yeah quite a bit cool. of a budget for nature <laughs> yeah maybe yeah. yeah it's not always perfect i mean everything has an impact on on the yeah. planet but yeah 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 we can try so to make it better yeah yeah so in terms of um you also mentioned that your trip to to new zealand and and flying so that had a big impact as well on on making you more conscious about how you travel, is that right? And and trying to travel less by by air and more by train and and, yeah. and other ways, yeah. Yeah, I, I, I no, I try to do that. I'm not sure. I won't. <clears throat> I won't never use. I, I think I will use the plane again. Yeah. Uh, in my life, but uh, for example, last year I've been to Scotland with the mm. train. But on speaking the way of, back, uh, it was speaking some... of bad weather. That's, yeah, uh, yeah, yeah. Some... It was amazing. <laughs> <laughs> it was good. Yeah. It was good. It was just rainy all the time, <laughs> and it was very cold. <laughs> as soon as you cross the border into Scotland, I think it yeah. starts. It starts it... raining. That, that's... Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> that's what English people say, right? Yes. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Um, yeah, it, it looks a bit like New Zealand with a bad weather, but yeah. Um, yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Yeah, so I, I I went there by train, and on the way back I wanted to do the same, but the the train was too expensive, and I mm. thought it would be the same price as at the first way, the one way. Yeah, yeah. So I had to pay the flight because I I think you have to book the train 
very early and I'm not yes. present used to that. So I, I did a small part in plane, but most of the trip in train. And next time I will be careful about how I book mm. my, my train and stuff like that. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, I uh, no, I don't want to uh, <laughs> shame you there for getting the, the plane. I think anyone who's mm. tried to travel by train in the United Kingdom uh, may have experienced yeah, like a similar challenge. <laughs> to go to Scotland. It, it can be challenging to do the right yeah. thing sometimes. It's, yeah. Uh, yeah it, um, but I, I feel like there could be a whole other episode of the podcast about train travel in the United Kingdom, but we'll, we'll, we'll save that for another day. But, okay. uh, yeah. <laughs> but I, I, I think it's very interesting, I guess, because also for, for, it's not something necessarily that I would think about, but with filmmaking, I guess travel is a huge part of um, what filmmaking is you're, you're you've got to be on location in different places yeah exactly it's a big part of your your cost base but also yeah your footprint i guess yeah, yeah. uh so now that i'm working in france i always use the train for now yeah, um, yeah the yeah. thing is if um next year's i want to work with a team mm. with more you know bigger camera and stuff yeah. Um, it's hard sometimes to take the train because of the price you have in the suitcase. Like if you have yeah. a 10,000 euros camera in your suitcase, you don't want to take the train. But for uh, the moment, I, I don't have any 10,000 camera. <laughs> it's, a <bit laughs> yeah. it's, it's a bit less. So I'm like, I'm always looking at my bag, but I'm like, it's going to be fine. And I, 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 I'm crossing, yeah, I'm traveling a lot in France. Um, I the, see, I see. With, the, with your bag it. very close to you, yeah. But with big bags, you know, in Paris, yeah. it's always, well, what an yes. adventure yeah. <laughs> in the subway. <laughs> yeah, so. Yeah. Yeah. I didn't even think about these things, but yeah, it's it's a very good point. And and yeah. so I guess what I'd love, I'd love to talk to you more about then is is your sense that filmmaking is this incredibly powerful way to make the world a bit better and and to convey a, a very impactful message I, I i'd love to hear more about your thoughts on that and and maybe some of your experience of 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 seeing that happen um to me filmmaking is a very um deep language and very complete yeah. uh i think it's the i i don't know i i like to say that because i think it's true but I don't know if it's true. I think it's the more the most complete language in the world mm. uh, because you can yeah. use any language in it, like French, English, Spanish, everything you want. And then yeah. you can use music, dance, theater, like everything can be, every language can be combined in one language, which is filmmaking with mm. the audio and the image. So to me, this is very powerful and mm. um, it can be on the internet, so it can be sent anywhere. Mm -hmm. And it can give a lot of emotions to the people. And that's why some companies can pay euros um, for a 30 seconds mm. video. Mm. You know what I mean? So yeah. it's a power, but at the same time, when if I take my phone and I film my, uh, I don't know, my... Uh, your cat? My, my, oh, my yeah. cat, for example, I don't know. <laughs> this is a video. Basically, you can wake up in the morning and do filmmaking. You just, you know, you film your cat. Yeah. So yeah. it's much more complex than that, than that, of course, when you do filmmaking. Mm. So you have to learn a different language. This is how mm. I see it. And then, um, to me, it's a language that a few people can speak, but everyone mm. can understand. And this is the magic of filmmaking for me. That's, I've never even heard it put like that. That's such, such a beautiful way of describing it. And, and you're so right. Like, I guess, yeah, filmmaking, everyone, uh, yeah, as well, I, I would only be repeating what you said there, but the, the way, the way you, um, the way filmmaking though encapsulates other mediums is, is actually, is actually something that never really occurred to me. Like you can take the best of, music the best of of acting the best of framing the best of writing and bring it all all together, all together to yes maxim like to have 
the impact that all of those c combined and perhaps even more so by bringing them together can be yeah. greater than the sum of the parts it's uh yeah and, and so i guess so for for you Mangali, you're uniquely positioned to take that power but apply it to businesses and brands that you really connect with and you really want to maximize the impact of and so that involves not just um the highest paying client but actually the the those that connect with you right yeah that's it yeah some i think yeah. i refused some very rich clients <laughs> <laughs> like uh, louis vuitton i can say that like lvmh i think yeah you know. i so, i do believe they are one of the biggest companies in the yeah. world aren't they i mean they have money you know <laughs> they have and, i think they have money they, yeah. they, they sell they sell expensive clothes, expensive whiskeys, uh, yeah. expensive wines. <laughs> yes, yeah, so I could I could make a big film for them. You know, I think they have a lot of money, but I, yeah. I didn't want to work for them because um, because I don't want to, and also because my my type of films won't suit with them uh, because I filmed the reality. So if reality is shit, it's going to be a shit movie, you know? <laughs> I, I see that like that. So, yeah, this is a way to uh, choose my clients. Absolutely. I, I, I can imagine many people listening would would crave having someone like that as a client. So uh, t tell me more about having the ability to even say no to someone like that. Like that, it must be you know, one of those logos that people would just love to have on their on their website or on their portfolio. And, yeah. and to, was that a difficult thing to decide? Or was it actually a very easy thing to decide because of your, your, your background and everything you've, you've figured yeah. out? I was quite surprised because uh, mm. they went to me. So mm. um, yeah, that's a I mean, very it, good it, sign. It, it, in it the was a, a guy working for them who went to me, yeah. not exactly them, but it was for mm. them. And I was like, um, I think you don't get what I'm doing. I was like, right. I think you didn't understand what I'm doing. Because the guy was like, I like your style. And I want it. Mm. I want this for Louis Vuitton. Mm. And I was like, have you been on my website? Like everywhere it's written, I don't want to work for companies that do shit products. And I'm not, <laughs> I'm not saying like everything is shitty, but there are so many problems with this company. So, I, um, yeah. But I, yeah, I thought about it a bit and I talked about it to my brother and he said, Mac, come on, like, wake up. <laughs> and I was like, yeah, you're, like, you're right. And it's because it's a lot of money. And then um, the good surprise is uh, the last few weeks I had like a, um, the best amount of demands from, mm. from companies. So five companies came to me in two weeks. Wow. And these are wow. companies that I like. Like, I like this project. Yeah. So I was like, I refused to work with this brand. But at the same time, other brands I like are coming yeah. to me. And um, it's not always like big brands. It's, it can be, um, for example, a city from, from France, Clermont-Ferrand in Auvergne. Mm -hmm. I, like, I have different demands like that. Um, mm -hmm. Yeah. Uh, I'm not sure I'd love, I'd love to have Louis Vuitton in my website. <laughs> yeah. yeah. I, I was just thinking maybe you could have a section of your website with the amazing brands that have got in touch that you've said no to. So <laughs> yes. <laughs> yeah, yeah, maybe I could Clients do Clients I have not worked with, you know? <laughs> yeah, that, that's a very good idea. <laughs> that's I'm incredible. not sure that would be all right. It could be, it could be fun, actually. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> That is, I, I guess then, um, I guess for many people wanting to, because I, you know, maybe this gets onto the topic of entrepreneurship and building a business, but for many people, you know, many people building a business, especially in the creative field, they're often struggling to like get any clients or, or you know, mm. pay their bills and pay their staff. And uh, many, many, especially at the moment, like lots of budgets being tightened, um, how do you put yourself in a position where you can actually say no? Would you say it's about just doing fantastic work? Is it about the quality of the work? Is it about 
the network you've built? Is it about other things that I'm not thinking about? I yeah, I uh, I'm intrigued by how you've put yourself in such a strong position. To be able to say no, you mean? Mm. Um, it depends on the period. Um, these days, it's easier for me since uh, I would say a few months because yeah. um, it's working pretty well. So um, I don't have the time to do everything. Mm. So I have to refuse mm. some clients. So I just choose who I want to work for. Yeah. yeah. But like one year ago, um, it was a bit different because um, I it was a bit hard than today um, to find clients yeah. um, um, because it was very the beginning of my company. I created mm. it a few years ago, but I was traveling. Then I had a health problem for one year. Mm. So it was not always like it was not a full time job. I was just doing yeah. video sometimes. And then, yes, yeah, since January, it's my full time job. And um, yeah, I say no. And I just I, I gain less money. <laughs> I mean, this yeah. is like, um, yeah, you, you are less rich, um, of course, when you <laughs> say no to some clients. But then um, to say no is also to have time to for other people. And then you can work, with, I mean, you can make money with other companies. There, there are yeah. not just one company or two you can work for. Yeah. So it's a matter of choice, I think. Um, yeah. Yeah, and maybe yeah. it's also because I'm, quite lucky with a engineer um, degree. Mm. So I know mm. if it's if someday it's really complicated, I can find a job. Mm. Sure, yeah. sure. So, so yeah, yeah, you have good options at your disposal. Yeah, I feel to, safe, to... Do you know what I mean? Like, I'm, yeah. I'm not like, yeah. yeah. And yeah, I, I live in yeah. Grenoble and it's not very expensive there. So. Okay. <laughs> It helps, also helps. But now, yeah, yeah. I, I have too many demands. So now uh, it's easier to say no, I guess. I mean, it's an incredible position to be in. It, yeah. it speaks to the, it must speak to the quality of work <laughs> and, that you do. And mm. I, so I, I'm intrigued, Magali, uh, how the, the films you make for these brands, how yeah. does that process go? And, and like, and, and what, as a filmmaker, that obviously, you know, I, I think... <laughs> I assume everyone uh, listening to the podcast has watched a movie before and they uh, there is a long list of credits at the end. So yeah. <laughs> when you say you're a filmmaker, do you do all of those things? Or yeah, how many this, of is, those the, things do you this do? is the funny part. <laughs> uh, when you're a freelance filmmaker, yeah. um, you can do this uh, alone, everything. Yeah. So as, yeah. it's exactly that. Like, when you look at the credits of a film, there are many, many people working for yeah. one video. And so this is a challenge to make everything alone because you have to think about the quality of the footage, um, the camera movements, the sound design, and the interview. And what we are doing yeah. right now, I can do that also. I can interview people. But at the same time, I'm thinking the sound. I'm filming. So it's like a full job like <laughs> there are many things to think about to think about uh, but then my goal is um like i start to, to work sometimes uh, in teams uh, mm. because the quality of the projects um is increasing with team to me yeah. like it's yeah. it's normal because for example just for the color grading if you work yeah. with someone specialized specialized in color grading like the the person is doing that every day of the year yeah yeah of course uh, the person <laughs> will be better than you even if i do that yeah so if you do that yeah. with in for any um like uh, parts of the filmmaking process it will yeah. be better so my Absolutely. my goal is to be um more and more the director of the movie Got and it. to manage a team so i start to do that sometimes and it's always the budget problem like if yeah. the company like for example a uh, Two times ago, um, an organization asked me a, a movie of uh, 15 minutes. Mm -hmm. And um, they told me I, we want the biggest budget ever. <laughs> so like, you know, I've heard of this kind of plan before. Yeah, yeah. It's, it's infinite. Like, I, you can do a movie with 1 million euros for 15 minutes if we want. Like, it can be very yeah. expensive. Um, yeah. But um, 
Yeah, it was not one million, but I, I <laughs> but I, um, I suggest to work with the team for this project. Uh -huh. I mean, now they are looking for money because it's a lot of money. But um, <laughs> yes. but yeah, we can go very far with the team in fifteen yeah. minutes. And Absolutely. typically, like the thing I like to work on is the sound design to work with studios okay. because when I do that, I I do good sounds like the voices are beautiful and stuff. But I love to work with people that that can imagine a sun mm. sun design world. I don't know how to say that, like mm. a full sound uh, sound world. And um, uh, like a, yeah, I don't, like, I don't I, yeah, know in I'm English how like to say that. Universe, yeah. maybe yeah, a universe. Sun, <laughs> universe. Like it's it's very um, in, like when we we watching a movies. Um, yeah. If we close our eyes, like a movie, a cinema movie. Um, a lot of things are happening mm. and this is a yeah. real work to do that and yeah yeah to do that on my own sometimes I, i'd love to work with people that are very focused on this work yeah because it can bring yeah. a lot to productions yeah absolutely absolutely yeah i um what not many people realize is there's actually 200 people working on this podcast just out of shot from me <laughs> <laughs> we, we it's Maybe actually fascinating you will have a filmmaking team with you. <laughs> Some people do that. Chris is a fantastic editor yeah, of the show. That was and, just, you know, uh, the and, headphones uh, on the phone. But it's yeah. a start. <laughs> it's incredible, though, when you think about... I guess it's like with with many, many types of business, you know, there's that going from yourself to mm, two people, to three people, to ten people, the... Mm. the, the opportunity and and the challenges and and what that enables is is um is fascinating and yeah hearing you talk about some of those things i didn't even think about color grading and, and stuff like that like yeah. <laughs> so many things to think about yeah so, so very complete so with the, the brand so brands will will come to you and they will have an idea of a story they want to tell and 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 your your desire is to sort of make sure that 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 story is is as honest and truthful and uh and and i guess impactful as as possible and and that's why picking the right brands is so important i guess because if you're working with a brand that doesn't have those same values then how can you be truthful and honest yeah, with it's not their going intention? to work like for branded yeah. documentaries it won't work yeah um, because yeah. if for example you're working for clients that, that don't like your your work and then I have to film them. Yeah. I mean, they're not going to say, I love it if they don't love it. Mm. Or even if it's your employees, if they they will feel the pressure to say, I like these companies, but if deeply mm. inside of them, they don't like it, we, we could feel it. And for example, a few weeks ago, I, I've done a, a film for... Um, a companies uh, in the wood industry mm. and um, I was a bit scared of like it's mm. quite, it's not big big company but like 100 people working for them and mm. um, and uh, I imagine you know the 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 how do you say the CEO with yeah. a you know well dressed and very serious and yeah. I, I, I don't know. I was like, oh, it's going to be weird. <laughs> like, but I trust them. But I, 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 I hope like the employees like the the company because otherwise yeah. it's going to sound very weird. And actually <laughs> it was amazing. Like people, it's a beautiful company with a great uh, management. So uh -huh. people are happy and I could feel that during the interviews. And uh... if it's um, good in the inside, then the film is going to be good. Mm. And my job is to put that on the screen. Yeah. So, yeah, I have to look for what is the unicity of the company. Yeah. yeah. it's Yeah, that's incredible. I, I guess there's a lot of people that want to use filmmaking to portray outwardly a di very different image to what is happening in internally and uh <laughs> and and you're not the person to go to if no no that. no don't go with me <laughs> i don't do fiction <laughs> yeah yeah this is that's so that's amazing. why i can work for some of companies like it won't work yeah 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 i mean Absolutely. there are beautiful stories everywhere 
of course you mm. can there is a movie about uh, McDonald's in Netflix so mm -hmm. you can tell stories with any char big character and stuff but then yeah it's um, hard work I think to do that and I don't want to yeah. do that as well yeah yeah absolutely well um I know one of the things we always like to talk about on the show is is people's thoughts on the future of their their industry and how do you see things changing in the world of filmmaking, especially for brands then over over the next few years, Magali? Like, uh, yeah, what what's what do you think the world's going to look like in a few years' time? <laughs> in the filmmaking industry? Yeah, yeah. Yeah, um, I'm I'm not sure about that, but I'd love <laughs> to see sustainable companies uh, not be shy of um, sure. making great films because yeah. there is also this fear of oh no. Uh, filmmaking is, uh, you know, you, manip you are manipulating people. Mm. So we don't want emotions. We just want to use the, the numbers, mm. the statistics to say we are doing a good job for the environment or for the planet, yeah. for the society and stuff. And at the same time, like big brands um, are using the emotions to say we are perfect with the environment mm. and they use filmmaking language very well mm. and i hope mm. it's going to be the contrary um yeah next year's i think it's quite urgent to do that and yeah um i think it's uh the like the world i imagine like the perfect world for me is where filmmakers refuse to tell stories they don't like mm. and mm -hmm. i know some filmmakers that are working for advertising that they don't like the companies and they are telling me yes, but I need money. So it's always the yeah the same problem to be able to say no, and yeah. then it's just it's it's yeah. gonna it's going to come I think because more and more companies are making efforts. So yeah, yeah, it yeah. should come. Yeah, absolutely. I feel I feel incredibly inspired from this conversation, Magali. I uh, <laughs> I, I I think what you said there, even just at the end around businesses that do at their heart want to do the right thing i think sometimes i know we've talked on the podcast before about um in the past on p previous episodes about sort of green washing but also green hushing and people not wanting to say anything for fear of being wrong and um Mm. And and I, mean, I think hushing, you say. Okay. yeah I don't yeah know, and, and yeah it's it's a term that was new to me as as well and um, I think it's maybe something that it kind of relates to what you're saying there in filmmaking, where a lot of these businesses, they they're like, if we we need to prove that we are doing the right thing with the facts and the numbers, yeah, and, and that is obviously a good thing, and that nothing can argue, with, no one can argue with the numbers often, but um, but yes, yeah, sometimes does that risk missing the opportunity to have a greater impact in terms of storytelling, or how can that storytelling? not be lost when when you are so keen to also make sure things are proven with with facts and numbers like how how do you combine those two i think is it's a really interesting yeah area for for brands to look at yeah that's right it's a balance actually yeah um, the more information yeah. you put in a video the less emotions mm. you have mm. sometimes yeah. silence <laughs> is great when you see mm. a person who starts crying and mm -hmm. you don't say anything but you feel the emotions and uh, mm. it can be more powerful than just putting words and say these numbers and blah, blah, blah. Um, yeah. You can have, you can put numbers in films, but just, yeah, it's to me, it's a balance. And yeah. uh, it, I think you have also um, the, like you can also put uh, proofs of your eng engagement uh, on your website, mm -hmm. or, mm. you know, in a written way in other yeah. ways and to me video is emotion like you need to think yeah. like that because this is a power and if you mm. only use that in an information informative way you lose yeah. all the power of it you just <laughs> you just grab your camera yeah. and do something but this is not filmmaking this is just wreck you know you see <laughs> like it's, it's just not hitting, hitting record rather yeah, than just filming. recording yeah. that's all <laughs> <laughs> Um, Magali, it's been an absolute pleasure speaking with you. I can't believe we've already spoken for over half an hour, mm -hmm. and uh, I, I, it's such an inspiring conversation with you. I, um, I hope that people listening will want to go check out your work. Um, so I, I guess everything 
is on your website, right? Which is a French website, of course. Yeah, but, uh, sorry. I'm sure, it's a French I'm website. I'm sure people can try out their French skills or, or maybe translate it with Google Translate. I don't know. But uh, yeah, yeah. it's <laughs> allheroes.fr. That's, yeah, that's right? it. Yeah. yeah. And we'll link that in the, in the notes. Um, yeah. And, and if anyone wants to connect with you, they can find you on, on LinkedIn as well, right? Yeah, yeah. that's right. Yeah. <laughs> okay, amazing. Magali, it's been a pleasure having you on the show. Thank yeah, you thanks. so much for thanks joining Thanks for me. <laughs> inviting me. That was great. <laughs> Thank <And> English, you. <laughs> speaking English, I missed that. So. I, I have hot. to admit, uh, très, très bien uh, on, the, uh, on, on the English skills. Far better than my, my French skills. French? I won't even try. <laughs> Thanks. <laughs> you haven't said like, anything in French. What can you say to finish the podcast? I, I, uh, <laughs> merci beaucoup <laughs> pour, pour, uh, uh, pour le podcast. <laughs> I don't know. This is perfect. We, we, yeah. we, it's very bien. <laughs> <laughs> uh, and uh th thank you i will i'll definitely not try any more french but thank you very much Maggie. yeah that's all right thank and you thank you uh thank you to everybody also for for tuning into the podcast listening in watching uh we really appreciate it if you've enjoyed the show please do tell uh others about it and uh spread the word uh because it's wonderful to share stories like Magalie's, and uh we'll catch you next time <laughs>